In this video, we're going to review stationing efficiency. There are various ways that you can station a total station, but typically it boils down to two different basic methods. And that is stationing with a prism rod over a set number of points on a job site, or having mounted prisms scattered around the job site that you're stationing with. Essentially, if we look at the station with the prism rod, what you're doing is you have your prism rod with the prism on top or on bosom or, or both, and you have certain coordinates indicated by crosshairs, geo-coordinate -co locations, or even a survey coordinate scattered around a job site that you can place your prism pole on top of, get it level, and measure as a coordinate for a control point. The other type is where you have scattered around your job site certain glass prisms, plastic prisms, set prisms, whatever it might be, that are generally weatherproof that you can station to no matter where you're located on your job site, whether you're on the 10th floor, the 1st floor, on the far east side of the job site, or the far west of this job site. These are usually situated in locations that are easily accessible no matter where you are. Which one's better? Which one's faster? Which one's more efficient? Hopefully this video will help you. There are definitely pros and cons to both situations, which we'll review at the end of the video. What we want to do first, though, is show you the speed and efficiency that you can have between the two stationing types. What we did is we went to a large parking area that had the dimensions of a typical job site. Roughly, this is about 200 feet long by 100 feet wide. And what we did is we had four specific stationing locations that we wanted to test out the efficiency between the two stationing types. We had a stationing location here, 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 and here. Essentially, if we were to do this in the real world on a real job site, most likely we would have to station in these four locations on a job site, given the scenarios of the building process. Now with this, we had established two sets of control points represented with these two icons. You have yellow X's that are going to represent over point locations, such as a grid line intersection, for instance, that we station with our prism rod. And you also have green circles that we have representing our prism locations where we actually used mounted prisms to station. And they're located in these locations. Here are the locations that we have for our crosses on the ground where we put our prism pull over. And here are the locations of where we put our mounted prisms. Hopefully this shows you the setup that we used to test these two different methods. The yellow X is representing where we take our prism pole, level it, and measure control points, and the green location is representing where we have our mounted prisms. Now when you watch the video, you're going to see two screens. On the left is going to be the screen watching us as we station with a prism rod over those set yellow X's, and on the right is going to be us as we station at the four locations using our staked prisms or our mounted prisms at different locations. Now what we've done is we have on the bottom left here the timer between the two stationing types and also a tally of how many stations we complete as we complete them. You'll see over here the numbers 1, 2, 3, and 4 on both sides representing the stationing locations. Yellow represents we're on that current stationing and green represents when that stationing is completed. So you'll see these numbers turn from yellow to green. And afterwards, we'll go ahead and review what we've learned and what our experience was. So here's that final slide that you saw regarding the time it took to station between the two types. On the left, you can see that our time to station was about eight minutes per stationing, where we had to set the station up in a certain location and then walk to the four different locations where we had our control points. On the right side, you see that we have a three minute, three minute and a half minute stationing, where we simply had to set the station up in a specific location and then simply target to our four control points which made it a lot faster because we didn't have to move around the job site. 
So clearly, as far as time goes, it's a lot faster to station the total station when you're using mounted prisms. However, when you station a total station, you don't just care about time. It also matters about accuracy. If it's not accurate, it's not worth doing. So let's take a look at the next slide where we're going to look at the accuracy. What you can see over here, I have a highlighted at the top, the time per station, just so that we can keep that up at the top of our minds. And below, I have the four stationings that we completed, as well as the accuracy that the total station was telling us that we were receiving. Now, if you have not used the Hilti total station before, it's okay. Let me explain what these numbers mean. The far left icon, these, these images here, represent the control points that we measured. You can see that for stationing with the prism rod over points, on most occasions, we were able to get four points measured. On some occasions, only three were able to be measured simply because we were too far away from the station with our prism for it to recognize it. And we would have to either switch prisms or find another way to measure that point. But let's look at the accuracy. We were able to get at least three points measured when stationing with our prism rod over points. And what we can see here is after we measured the points, it tells us over here on the screen how the points were regarding accuracy. It shows us on the left how the points had to adjust to match what the digital plan was asking for. And on the right, it shows us how the total station was able to confidently find itself at a certain location after it adjusted the points to match the, the, the digital plan. So some of our stationings look pretty good, such as a 16th of an inch off here, a 16th off here. But one thing to highlight is that as you notice, there are some stationings where we would measure a point, trying our best to be as accurate as possible, but we are still off by about a quarter of an inch almost on some of the points. And when you look at the right, specifically for the northern and eastern coordinates, the station sometimes struggled, such as in this case, to find itself potentially being about a quarter of an inch off. Now, why is this important? Well, this is important because if you are stationing over points using the prism rod, and you, let's say you do four different stationings on one floor. Long story short, these stationings, because they are what you can think of as bouncing within a certain margin of error, the layout points you measure could also not be falling exactly on top of each other. The total station will lay things out dimensionally correct, but as far as the location goes, they might differ station to station if there's a margin of error over here. Now let's look at the situation with the mounted prisms and see if we see any difference. If you can tell, you can already see that there's a lot more zeros you see on this side. Not only in almost every instance were we able to measure four points, except for this instance where one of our mounted prisms was blocked by a lamppost that was in our way. But again, the most critical part about this is to make sure you get at least three control points to measure off of. But what you can tell is that regardless of where we stationed our unit, we were able to zero in almost dead on in every single situation. Our maximum error was a 16th of an inch on this side for these mounted prisms. And on this side, our maximum error was about a quarter of an inch. Not only that, but after we measured zeros on the left side, we were also able to have our station confidently find itself a coordinate on our job site, zeroing out with full confidence. Mounted prisms have won so far on the time per station being more than twice as fast as, all, as well as accuracy. However, let's look at one more slide to just kind of look at the full situation from a bird's eye view. Both stationing types have pros and cons. Let's go ahead and give stationing with prism rods over points a little bit of a break here because there certainly are positives to this stationing situation, such as they're very easy to establish control points and marks on the ground. All you have to do to establish control points is simply mark the ground, measure it, and save it as a control point. It's that easy. That convenience is something that you can easily get with this type of stationing. In addition, most of the time, the points that you measure are on the ground and they're easy to check. You can check, measure to them, recheck them, compare other points to these points on the ground very quickly. That kind of convenience is also very nice to have. However, let's just remind ourselves about the cons of constantly stationing in this type of a situation. First of all, it's difficult to have these control points encompass the entire job site on stationing. Let's take a look again at our job site situation. If you can remember, we had to have our control points placed on the ground as X's for our prism rod to get it. Most of the time, it's hard to get these to be on the exterior of the layout area. In our case, this parking lot, the entirety of the parking lot was our layout area, but our control points were obviously on the inside of some of the points that we might lay out on the outside of these control points. Remember, when they're on the exterior of the layout area, 
that helps minimize any sort of layout error that we might experience while we're laying out. In addition, we have another potential con, which is that using prism rod specifically adds a potential error to that as well. Let's take a look at one more image. When you use a prism pole, there's a specific thing you need to be aware of. That's the fact that when you have a prism at the top of a rod, the total station is measuring the prism, not the point that you're standing right on top of. So you have to be extra careful to make sure that the prism is perfectly level, otherwise you might have a slight error. It's hard to mitigate this error when you're using a prism pole. It's possible to be extremely careful, but still you need to be extra careful to make sure that the prism is calibrated, that the bubble, the level bubble on the pole is correct, and that you are not out of level at all. It's a hard one to keep consistent. Another issue that might occur is that control points that are marked on the ground could be covered, moved, or destroyed. Let's take a look at these pictures over here again. Oftentimes, marks on the ground, especially if they're chalked on the ground, could be covered by pallets and other equipment, or they could simply be washed away or, or rubbed off in some sort of way. Control points that are on the ground like this could be covered as well by pallets of some sort, or the general process of construction might completely hide them and they might be forced to be hidden because of the, how the building is put up. So it's very important to remember that control points that you place on the ground might get covered or hard to be seen. And of course, we already talked about that it could take longer than having prisms mounted. But now let's talk about using mounted prisms, which is what we found to be the most convenient. What are some of the positives? Well, as we've already seen, they are stable prisms that cannot be moved or get covered, generally speaking. Let's take a look at the images again. Most mounted prisms are high above the air, usually mounted to columns, piers, etc. And they're away from the general hustle and bustle of the job site, meaning that they, it's hard for them to get covered or to be out of your line of sight. You can put them high, low, or any location that you find convenient that you can see them no matter where you are or no matter how high you are on your job. In addition, they can encompass the entire job site, usually because they are on the exterior of the layout area. If we remember, our mounted locations were on the exterior of our entire area, and it's very easy to make it such because they simply mount to walls away from everybody and the hustle bustle of the job site. Remember, having control points on the exterior of the job site always helps to mitigate errors as you lay out. As already mentioned, because these mounted prisms do not move, and because you no longer are using a prism rod, it's much easier to maintain accuracy. And of course, because of that, and you don't have to walk around to measure to certain points with your prism rod, you have a much faster stationing time. Now, of course, with, pris with mounted prisms comes some cons, which we can talk about. First of all, the initial setting up of your prisms could take some time. You have to drill and mount these prisms to walls. Also, it might be difficult to inspect these prisms after they're placed up on the wall. It might take a ladder or a lift to get back up and inspect to make sure that the prism is, for instance, facing in the, direct, in the correct location. And of course, it, it needs to be mentioned that yes, you do need to purchase more prisms, which could come with an initial extra cost, but the amount of convenience that comes from purchasing prisms makes them pay for themselves. So what system should you use? From our findings, we found it that it was much more efficient to use mounted prisms. If we remember the general rules of thumbs of control points, remember having many control points available on the site is very important. You want to be able to access control points that are stable and stationary no matter where you have to station. Mounting prisms helps that immensely. Secondly, you want to make sure that the control points are stable and immovable. Third, make sure the control points encompass the entirety of the job site. And fourth, station on the same control points as often as possible. All of this is possible by using mounted prisms. I hope this has been helpful, and if there's any questions, please leave them in the comments.